Hello, right here we are. We've got uh, Laurie Lowenberg here now, the dream expert to the stars. Me and Lee have been trying to get a dream expert on this show. Everybody's been asking for one, and we're going to get to some questions and a bit of background on dreams and stuff like this. So, hi, Laurie. How are you? I'm Hello. doing great. Thanks for having me on. Excellent. Laurie, did, am I right? You're in Tampa. Yeah, Tampa, Florida. I love Tampa. I've, I've been to, I, I used to go down to um, Clearwater quite a lot down mm -hmm. there uh, that way. I love the beach down there, St. Pete's and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. the dolphins off the... The dolphins, the manatee, <laughs> the pelicans. Oh. I love yeah. it. It's a bit odd. How do you stand the humidity in Florida? <laughs> well, I'm right on the water, so the breeze helps with the humidity, but right. it, my hair doesn't like it at no. all. <laughs> <laughs> we went out on the on the pier there at Clearwater, and down the end of that pier, it was really yeah. bearable like with the breeze, as you yes. say. Yeah. But everywhere, we, when we was in Orlando and things like that, oh, so I just needed to get aircon. I kept going into uh, all of the stores in Disney and all this just to, just yeah. to get the aircon for me. I couldn't cope with it. But I we don't have Florida. a winter, so no. I was I was there one time in February, March, and it was it was good. I liked the the weather then. But last time I was there was May, and it was uh, oh my god, it was I was like melting all the time, and I didn't know what to do about it. There's nowhere to go to get out of it. It's like I just <laughs> I was buying those ridiculous it. water spray things yeah. from the theme parks that you they, they go warm within about five minutes. Like right. you get cold water, and it's like all oh, right anyway. Right, so we're going to be talking about dreams then, Laurie. So how are you into this then? What what first interests you about uh, like studying dreams and stuff like that? Well, I could remember my dreams ever since I was like two or three years old. I've been a very vivid dreamer my whole life. I would draw them when I was little. And then when I got older, I started writing them down. And I didn't even realize what a wonderful thing I was doing for myself by keeping a dream journal, you know, mm -hmm. essentially you're documenting the other side of your mind. Um, but it wasn't until I was 19 and my grandfather died and he was the first person close to me to ever die. So it was, you know, and we were close. So it was really, really hard. About two weeks later, I had a dream where I was walking arm in arm with him through this museum and I knew he had died. And so I asked him what it was like where he's at. And he said, I can't tell you that, but what I can tell you is that it's secure. Then he gave me a hug and started walking up the staircase and I woke up and I could smell his old spice. I could still feel him around me. It was so vivid and so real and so different than other dreams. And it, it I, I still remember it like it was last night, you know, it hasn't left me. And so that made me wonder what is really going on when we go to sleep and we, we like live this other life and enter this other world. So that's the dream that propelled me to study dream psychology. Right. And so I was so impressed with how practical actually our dreams are when you can understand the symbolic subconscious language that they speak to us in. They're very, very helpful. It's, you know, we problem solve when we're dreaming and we're thinking when we're dreaming, we're just thinking in a different language. Yeah. So that I always struggle to remember my dreams. I really want to, like you know, when you when you wake up and you think that was brilliant. I'm gonna I'm gonna remember. I definitely will remember that one. And then yeah. as the day you wake up, like you go back to sleep for an hour or something, and then you think, right, what happened again? I, I need to tell people yes. about this dream. What's yes. that about? Like, should yeah, I be writing? Because even when I write, I write. Uh, sometimes <laughs> I wake up and I write bullet points. This will remind me. This will jog my memory. And it's still I've got so much missing. I'm not much of a. I, I don't remember them very well at all. What do I do about that? So that's normal, and it's frustrating because something that's so beneficial and cool is yeah. so slippery. Um, so what you want to do whenever you wake up, whether it's in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or you're waking up for good in the morning to start your day, you want to remain in the exact same position you woke up in because that's the position your body was in when you were dreaming. Rolling over, moving your body is like unplugging yourself from the dream you were literally in seconds ago. So stay in the exact same position you woke up in. Quiet your mind, don't think about anything, and just let the dream come back to you. You know, like come back to you in reverse, it'll seem like. Really? Yeah, and then just just soak it all in and then write it down in, in as much detail as you, or, or talk it into your phone, record it into your phone. Because if you don't do that, like you said, after breakfast, you're gonna it's gonna be gone, or most of the details are gonna be so gone. On that, then quickly, because I've got I've got a, a, a question. I wasn't gonna do the questions till later. 
But I've got a question from uh, uh, one of our listeners called Dawn, and she's, she's in Pennsylvania. And she okay. said to me, why do I always wake up when something good is about to happen in the dream? So could we say you can go back to sleep and continue? Mm, the thing about it is if you're woken up unnaturally, like there's a dog barking outside or, you know, the alarm goes off. If you're, if you're woken up unnaturally, then odds are better to be able to get back into the dream and continue it as opposed to if you wake up naturally, because then that dream cycle is over, it's done. So you're not really gonna be able to get back into it. The thing about our dreams that we need to keep in mind is that we dream every 90 minutes throughout the night, whether you remember it or not, you're entering REM dream sleep every 90 minutes. And so we'll have about five or more dreams on a good night. And each cycle of REM dream sleep is longer than the previous one. So your first one in the night will be like five minutes. And then they get longer and longer in duration until that last dream you have before you wake up in the morning, which can be like 45 minutes long. So I'm not dreaming. So like I've got a really, it really pisses me off my dreaming sleep because I don't get enough sleep. So I, I work, I have, I'm a baker. So I have to get up in the morning really, really early. Right. So I'm at half past two. My alarm's going off. Uh, and then I'll catch up on a bit of sleep during the daytime, uh, maybe an hour or two. So if I'm getting, say, four and a half, five hours at night and a couple of hours in the afternoon, there's not much, I haven't got much uh, leeway there to have a dream. Have I to an REM dream, you're saying? Yeah, you'll, you'll still be getting your dreams. Actually, your sleep pattern is normal. What it, our sleep patterns used to be naturally before we had the light bulb. We would have first sleep and second sleep. We would sleep in two dura um, two separate durations. So actually, you're you're not bad <laughs> the way right. you sleep, but you're still getting the same amount of dreams. They're just broken up. Yeah. And actually, the lighter you sleep, the more oh, easily yeah. you'll be able to remember your dreams. I do sleep light. I'm, I'm no I'm no good. If, I must wake up about every hour, uh, really, because I'm always ang anxious about the time. How much oh, longer yeah. have I got? How much longer yeah, have I got? Yeah, I understand that. So, so. Well, use that little trick I gave you. Well, you stay in the stay same put. position. Yeah, and you'll probably start remembering your dreams a lot more. How? What do you mean? Like, so if I say if I put my head up or sit up to look at the time, I can just lay back as long as I'm in the same position. I, I, try I, not to move at all. At all. Stay. I don't know what time is then. It, well, you just wait. <laughs> you can wait. <laughs> Be patient. Maybe I should get one them, first. I should get one of them clocks that like projects to the ceiling right, or something, yeah. and then I can see the time. I don't even know why I want to know what the time is. Just to, to annoy myself. Oh, I've only got another <laughs> half an hour or something like that. I don't know why I do it. I don't know why I'm obsessed with the time. But sometimes I've noticed. But on this topic, what the, what this listener said that uh, sometimes my alarm actually cuts me off from my money, yes. my, my my lottery win or something. Yes. <laughs> What's that? Like, how does that? It's no. such like freak timing. Yeah, it's funny how that happens. No, but yeah. when that happens, just turn off your alarm, stay in your same position, and try to get back to the dream. Oh, I have something cool you should try. Right, go on. Okay. So whenever you set your alarm for whenever you normally have to get up, set yep. it 20 to 30 minutes earlier. And no. have your <laughs> yes, no, trust me. I'm already a zombie. <laughs> trust me. Try this. Right. Okay. So then have your snooze ready to wake yeah. you up at the normal time you would wake up. Mm -hmm. So here's what happens. When you go to sleep, when your alarm wakes up 20 to 30 minutes early, you have this 20, 30 minute window where you'll go back to sleep, but you won't go deep enough into the deep delta, which is the stage of sleep that will erase the dream, the memory of the dream. You'll stay in the lighter stages. So when you do start to dream again, you're more likely to hold on to enough consciousness as well so that you can become lucid in your dream, realize it's a dream and then take control. And yeah. You can do anything you want. Yeah, that does happen sometimes. I'll try to take control. But there's one thing that I, that I do get. Sorry, Lee, I will let you speak eventually. No, that's fine. <laughs> uh, it's good listening. <laughs> uh, the, the, there's, one, there's one thing that, um, that, that gets on my nerves, sleep paralysis that I get. Mm. Right? And why do I get this? Because like, I am very aware that I'm I not get dead. That as well. I'm very aware that uh, I am awake, but I cannot open my eyes or move. Right. Yeah. Do, how do I get around that? 
Okay, you can turn that into a lucid dream. I'm too busy trying to turn it into non death. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so you're not going to die. <laughs> Let me explain what that is. It's it, it's it's a frustrating and often a very very frightening experience. When it you, was the first time, yeah. Uh, when you have that experience, do you also feel like a dark, sinister presence in the room? No, but I've read about that. Like some people yeah. talk about this, like a, something's goblin on their chest or something. Yeah, yeah. It's it's such like a, a weird. Demon. Yeah. Yes, yeah. a demon or a ghost or an alien. You know, um, a small back in. Gray. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 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 um, I believe, by the way. Anyway, back to the sleep paralysis. Well, well, we can get into that if you want later. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think, well, quickly on that one, do you think mm -hmm. that that's what some people that are saying they're being abducted is just sleep paralysis? I, yeah, I yeah. think that when when you're in your bed and, and, you know, you feel yourself leaving your body and then you feel that presence in the room and then people associate that with an abduction, I don't think that's an abduction. I think that's a byproduct of sleep paralysis. Yeah. Um, but other abductions, I'm... Yeah, I, I, ne I never, I, I never feel like uh, we did have an alien abductee on, didn't we, Lee, last year? Yeah, she, and she, she was like a bit strange, but good. Yeah, she, she <laughs> was. Strange, she she yeah. was saying that the the, the aliens that, she, that have, have abducted her, this is what she was saying, were they wasn't from space, they was from Earth underground. Oh, I see. Make of that what you will. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. Uh, yeah, no so comment. Sleep paralysis. So yes. that so that's that's an odd. But I never I never feel like there's a presence in in the room with me. Okay, I just I know now I know of it's sleep paralysis. It, yeah. it doesn't. I I almost feel like right. This is sleep paralysis. Uh, I need to just relax and go back to sleep, and then I'll be yeah. able to wake up. That's yeah, how I deal right. with it now. Yeah. So, so what what's going on when we get sleep paralysis? It tends to happen when we have a fitful night of sleep, or our sleep routine is off, or we're just not good sleepers. Um, so, what happens is the falling asleep and the waking up process is actually very complicated. There's a lot of things going on in the brain and the body in order to allow us to fall asleep. Certain parts of the brain are going dormant, other parts are becoming active, etc. When we're not having good sleep, we can get stuck in between. Now, what happens, you know, when, when we enter REM dream sleep, our brain releases a chemical through our brain stem and into our skeletal muscles to paralyze us right. so that we don't get up and act out our dream. It is a built-in mm -hmm. safety mechanism. When right. we're having a rough night of sleep, we can start to wake up before our body can catch up and reactivate our skeletal muscles. So we get stuck in that in-between state, which is called hypnogagia where you're asleep and awake at the same time. So you are literally paralyzed, but you still are in enough of sleep that you've got hallucinations going on, a little bit of waking dream going on. Um, also, the very, very center of the brain, the amygdala, which is controls the fear, uh, emotions and fear, is highly, highly active during this state. So that's why it, it feels scary. And then we're not sure why that, that dark, sinister presence seems to be a part of this for a lot of people. And people will feel, you know, pressure on their chest. They think it's sitting yeah. on the chest. But that's just the paralysis you're feeling. Um, auditory I wonder if like, I, 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 I cannot but, sleep on my back. So that's probably why that's – I've never – I always sleep on my side and my front. Oh, so I yeah, that be, may be why. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't be pinned down. Mm. Yeah. But, so, but like you said, if you just give it a moment, you know, you'll snap out of it like yeah, that. But I, I tell my clients. Yeah that have it to yeah. turn it into a lucid dream yeah. ask a question and see what kind of answer you get I, I, what about grinding my teeth that's what i do as well is that anything <laughs> oh. to do with this <laughs> that's Sunday probably trauma. connected to your anxiety <laughs> yeah, do you, well, do you have know. anxiety do you get panic attacks no nah. I'll just... probably sleep anxiety because only because I, am I going to get enough sleep? I've got to go and work machinery in the morning. I'm going to be, it's going to be dangerous, that sort of anxiety, but not mm. generally in life. No. Okay. Have you tried a mouth guard to no, protect your teeth? but this is what the dentist says to me, right? Try a mouth guard. I feel like I don't want to look like Rocky in my sleep. <laughs> Who are but, you trying to impress? Well, you know, I just, I feel like I'm going to start shouting Adrian or something in the middle of the night. I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel, I, I feel like I wouldn't be able to breathe. Because I do this other weird thing where I, I hold my breath. It's not sleep apnea, but I'm aware that I'm not breathing. I'm aware that there's nothing restricting me. I just don't choose to breathe.
And I wake up thinking, oh, are I'm you breathing. sure it's not sleep apnea? Yeah, I've been to sleep clinics and stuff. What did they say? And they said it's you're nothing. just some kind they, of freak. <laughs> they, yeah, they said your, your oxygen levels are fine. Um, it must be something that you're doing when you're just waking. You feel like it's for longer, longer than it is, is what they said to me. Like, it's just when I'm kind of stirring, I might stop breathing. Oh. It's just to, I don't know. But that's mm. not dreaming then, is it? So it's nothing to do with anything that uh, you could suggest, no? Well, has it ever caused you any sort of health issue? No. Not that I'm aware. I mean, I'm not even aware of it now. Like, it was something that... When is this I was, all when the I was time kid, or just... Uh, I don't know. When yeah. I was a kid, uh, my mum used to say, "Oh, could hear because I make this funny. I used to make this strange noise as well." And then it's almost like I, I'm kind of like I don't know. I'm just making a sound like I'm like I'm almost like I don't know, like <laughs> making a high pitched sound rather than breathing. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> I'm glad when I didn't you, sleep with me. When, when you did the sleep study, did they record you? No, they just, uh, they told me to not sleep. They went into the hospital uh, in the daytime and I've slept for a couple of hours and they just said, no, nah. and they, they sent this uh, oxygen level thing I had to put on me at home for a week and they said, no, no issues. Huh. Mm. You, I would do another one where you're all <laughs> night and have them record you so yeah. you can watch yourself and also <laughs> hear tell, tell your noises that. and that that might give you some more insight into. I, I do that with my phone. What do you mean? So you've got an app on your phone where you can actually like record oh. your sleep. So you can record okay. whether you're talking in your sleep or if you like, it measures your, like how your quality of sleep that you're right. getting. Yeah. What you do that. Yeah. Well, every night. Not every night. But no. tell, can, tell me the app. I'll, I'll have a look. It's, it's what, just, what, a, it's, just, it's just, just a sound. Yeah. Is it? Just a sleep app. Yeah. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, oh, before we get into questions and stuff, because people have got a lot of questions here, I've got a question. So my car, first of all, when I dream, why am I always not at my house? Like, I'm always just randomly somewhere else, <laughs> right? Which my mum's or something, I haven't lived that forever. <laughs> and my car gets stolen all the time, which I, which I generally wouldn't care about. I'm not particularly into cars, <laughs> don't care. <laughs> But it's always from the back of my mum's house where I lived when I was like seven. So I don't know what, you know, I don't know what's uh, going on with that. Why would I be doing that? How long have you been getting that dream? Forever, for my whole life. Your whole from life? From when I've been driving. So so basically from, from from when I first started driving, it would be like I would go out to, the, to get in my car and it's not where I left it. Uh, it's happened, the dream has happened with my workplace as well uh, from that, but never from where I live, never from my house. Okay, so the car to the dreaming mind, remember everything in your dream is symbolic. So if you look at the dream literally, you're not going to get the message. Um, also, everything in your dream is some part of you right. or something that directly affects you. The car tends to represent your ability to progress, to move forward in life, to move towards a goal, your uh, energy, your motivation, your drive to reach a goal. Right. So when your car is stolen and you've been getting this ever since you had a car and it's most often in the back of your childhood home, right? Yeah. So my first question is, do you feel like you are not on the road, the path you wanted to be on in life? Um, I'm Jim. I'm, I'm fairly content. I think with, I mean, obviously I would, I would probably like most people rather be earning more money doing a job that I absolutely love. But I don't have any resentment about it. I don't feel like I don't hate anything I do. I don't. I'm, I'm not. In a way, I love. I love what I do because it's quite an interesting job and it gives me lots of opportunity. I finish very early, so I can spend a lot of time with my little boy and things like that. So I wouldn't change it for any any kind of other career where I'm out all the time or anything like. That. So no, I don't think. I don't know. Um, maybe back then. I don't when remember the last, the last time, time I had this dream. I don't. Oh, you don't not, remember not, the last not been for a while. No, not been for okay. probably uh, a year or so. I don't know. Okay. What about your energy level? Do you get exhausted? No. Or do you just get tired easily? Oh, I'm like, tired because of the lack of sleep, <clears throat> but I don't get uh, like a, not not physically exhausted about anything now. I wonder if that's it because that seems to be. Yeah. Both of these seem to be a constant. The, the weird sleep patterns 
lack of sleep, and then mm. losing your car, which can symbolize your drive, your motivation, I'm sure, I'm sure your motor, your my, engine. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of my stuff is because I have done early shifts for uh, 20 years. Hmm. So this I've could always, be it. yeah, I've always Next had like Next time sleep. you get it. Next time yeah. you get it, you want to look at the day before. Right. What was your energy level like? Okay. And then you may be able to connect the dots and this could be what's causing it. Yeah. Any weird dreams, Lee? Yeah, well, not a weird dream, but I've always wondered about this dream. I've had it for years since I was a kid. And it's like, it's such a peaceful dream. So I'm going to set the scene now. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, I'm walking through this green field and the green field is absolutely beautiful. It's like Do you know wind. the field? No. <laughs> the wind is blowing you can see like the glisten off off, off the grass the bl the sky is so blue and beautiful it's, it's it's just lovely and i'm sort of like in the middle of a mound like a, like a bowl so going up the side of the um the, the 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 field is like little hills and every time i get to the top of the side of the bowl i wake up but the dream is so peaceful and i never want to leave it and I always have that dream. Okay, by always, like how frequently and how long? I would say uh, I've had this dream since I was a kid. I'm 42 now, so. And how frequent uh, do you get it? Uh, probably at least once a week. Oh, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, when you're in the dream, yeah. do you recall having any kind of thought process? Are you thinking or saying anything yeah. to yourself? What yeah. is it? I, I'm, I'm just walking through this field and I'm walking up the hill, the side of the hill. And I'm just thinking to myself, I feel so calm. This is so okay. like, this is so beautiful. Okay. Like I never want to leave it. I never want to wake up. It's like, that's that, that's how nice it is. Okay. Like every, and the colors are so strong as well. Like the blue in the sky, the, the green, the white clouds, everything's just so strong. Like the colors are so strong. My thought is that this dream illustrates your peace of mind. Mm. And would you say you tend to be calm about oh. things? You don't get over emotional or over uh, angst. You're pretty calm most uh, of the time. I would say I'm... Uh, well, I'm la I'm a laid back guy, but when things piss me off, I can I can get on a roll. <laughs> so, <laughs> but most of the time, even killed, cool, yeah. calm, collected, yeah. down to earth. I would say, like, okay. I don't I, I don't yeah. think you worry about I don't think you worry about things that most people worry about. Knowing no. you as long as I've known you, but yeah. you do get stupid things that get on your nerves. Yeah, that you have an overreaction to, but generally. Yeah in life like money and stuff don't you're quite chilled and yeah 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 i could live in the shed it don't don't bother me okay yeah. so that yeah. this may be your subconscious our, our subconscious has a really cool way of giving form to the different mm. parts of ourself and the different parts of our life so this is the form what your peace of mind looks like when you're in mm. you know just a cool laid back as you said down to earth and you are kind of down in the earth the way you describe yeah. it yeah. down to earth personality so what yeah. i would do is next time you get it look at the day before what was that day like what was your yeah. mindset like yeah I've, I've always wanted someone like an artist to draw it i want to describe it to an artist for them to paint it but i'm so scared that i'll be disappointed like, <laughs> I like understand. Be, yeah because it, it's such a beautiful dream and it's like i've i think to myself oh they're a good drawer oh, they're a good artist i'll get them i'll describe it to them and i'll paint it but I just think nothing's ever going to be better than this dream. And you so, know what? I would just keep it in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when you meet your favorite celebrity and they turn out to be a dick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 You're, pro <laughs> yeah, you're probably, yeah. yeah. You probably, like you say, you wouldn't be able to recreate it if it's, if it, if it's that uh, impressive to you. Oh, man. Yeah, it could, it could yeah. totally ruin it for you and you never get it again. Yeah. It's just like so calm. It's like, do you know when you, do you know when you, you breathe that sigh of relief? Yeah. That's how it is. It's like in a dream, I'm like, <sighs> Are you annoyed when you wake up? Yeah, completely. Mm. Because no, I just no, think to mean. myself, like, why can't I stay? Like, my mum always says it's my sanctuary. 
it's like where I go. Um, Your happy place. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah completely. I would. Do, the thing about dreams is that they are a continuation of our thoughts from the day. You know, mm. all day long we have this thought process going on in our head. We're talking to ourselves. We have this inner dialogue with ourselves. You know, you yeah. wake up, you're showering, you're talking to yourself. You're cleaning the dishes, you're talking to yourself. When we go to bed at night and drift off to sleep, that stream of thought is still happening, mm. and it continues on once we enter REM dream sleep. Except mm. since the brain is working differently, rather than thinking to ourselves in words, we're thinking to ourselves in symbols, metaphors, and emotions. So it would be really beneficial to you to pay attention. Next time you get the dream, look at the day before. Yeah. And if, you know, what happened that day? What were you feeling that day? What mm. was your inner dialogue like that day? And then you may be able to make connections about what triggers the dream. Mm. Definitely. I, I, I said this to Matt the other day. It's like another dream. Like I'm a big <clears throat> I'm a big food fan. I love I love food, right? And I get this dream where <laughs> I I'm eating some like a not really nice burger. As I'm about to bite into it, I wake up. Yeah, we we was talking about that the what other day. Why would that day, be burger we? for you? Because that's what I've said, isn't it? Like because when something the... good's about to happen. Mm -hmm. But for you, it's burger. Yeah. That's fine. I'm I'm like Popeye's um what, like Popeye's friend, the burger. Wimpy. Yeah. Oh yeah, Wimpy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the dream may be connected to some kind of dissatisfaction in yeah. real life, mm. and the the dream symbolizes that it. it you know how we, when we talk to each other, we'll often use metaphors. Yeah. I think we utter like 10 metaphors an hour in conversation. Um, and we naturally speak this way in order to make our point. You know, I could tell mm -hmm. you, I am hungry, or I could tell you, I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. And that lets yeah. you know, I need to take her to lunch right now. <laughs> so <laughs> our dreams work the same way. They yeah. They bring... Um, our situations, our behaviors, everything to life in the form of a metaphor. Mm. So that about to take a bite of this beautiful, juicy burger and yeah. never getting to is a metaphor for something. Yeah. Some kind of incompletion or dissatisfaction in your real life. Yeah. I need to get to Florida because America has, has the best burger. We do America. have good burgers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love eating Florida. Oh, yeah. Now, that's the thing I miss the most when I don't, when I'm not in Florida as the food. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, so what we're saying, it's, so is it, can you apply that to a lot of these questions then when you say about just look at what you did the day before? Is it, there's not really, is there an answer for certain, obviously there's going to be, I've got some, some dreams here that I know you're going to have heard a million times, uh, what people have, have, have asked me to ask. But um, is there any kind of thing that, that they actually mean every time or is it always person specific as to what led up to the, that day? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. So what you're talking about are what we call archetypes, um, yeah. symbols or situations and dreams that we all tend to have, like teeth falling out, falling, right. being chased, um, losing your car, um, which are all pretty common for most of us. And then the meaning, therefore, is very typically common for most of us but our own personal experiences and associations are critical to getting down to the specifics of the meaning of the dream for you right so because i've got i got so what about this one ollie has sent me this dream i don't know where he's from he hasn't said but he said he all, always dreams and i don't know what he means by always but he says he always dreams that he can't run fast mm -hmm. he can run slow motion I've and he can't that. punch. People are attacking him and he can't <laughs> yeah. punch. It's like he's underwater. He's described it. Yeah. The, the can't punch, can't land a punch dream is really common, especially for men. Yeah. Uh, so both of these are about feeling ineffective in some area in your real life. So where you're running, does he say if he's trying to run to something or run away? No, he hasn't specified. He's just said he, he always has dreams where he can't run. He's slow motion running and slow motion okay. punching. Okay, so the slow motion running would likely happen whenever he's feeling very impatient about something in real life. There's yeah. a goal he's trying to reach or something he's hoping will hurry up and happen. And then the slow motion running, you know, is an expression, a symbolic expression of how he's feeling about how long this is taking mm. to acquire, to happen. Yeah. The punch is 
about not feeling effective enough with something he's trying. You know, when, when we attempt something, we say, I'll give it my best shot. Right. Okay. Right. So this dream is showing him he's not giving it his best shot. He's not doing enough. He's not got enough momentum going to attempt and make happen whatever it is. You know, maybe he's trying to get a promotion, but he's not performing well enough, for example. So do you feel like if he, if he improved his life... He could suddenly just beat the shit out of everyone in his dream. Yes, when he makes when he makes a big accomplishment, yeah, he'll <laughs> he will be a winner in some form or fashion in his dream. He will he will finally land that punch. Right there you go, Ollie. At the moment, you're very ineffective. Sorry, Mike. No, 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 no. <laughs> Demotion for Ollie. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Ollie, sort yourself out. Get promotion, and then you yeah. can be like you know. Rocky. Uh, yeah, you could be Mike Tyson <laughs> in your dream. <laughs> what else have I got here? Crumbling teeth. That's one. Mm. Kelly has sent that to me. Crumbling okay. teeth. Okay. So the teeth dream is really common. The most common version of the teeth dream is the teeth falling out. Yeah, my bad. That. Yeah. The crumbling teeth is l less common, but still, I get the crumbling teeth as right. opposed to the teeth falling. So any dream having to do with your mouth, your lips, your teeth, your tongue, throat area will usually be connected to how you've been communicating in real life lately right. when your teeth fall out it's usually because you've allowed something out of your mouth that should have stayed in there permanently <laughs> like your right. teeth so if you don't have a filter yeah. you may get that dream if you said something and you feel really stupid about it later you may get that dream um, the opposite end of the spectrum of that is the crumbling or cracking teeth so that's connected to weak speech because things crack and crumble when they're weak Right. So she may get this dream when she feels like she didn't hold up her end of an argument, when she didn't make her point strong enough, mm. when later down the day she's going, oh, I should have said this instead of that, you know. Right. So that, that's connected to weak speech. So if she gets this frequently, it's a good indication that this is a recurring behavior pattern of not feeling confident enough in what she says and in making her point. And so if she can begin working on that behavior – the dream will eventually stop. Why do you get that then? You don't come across like you struggle to have weak speech. I get it because I don't like confrontation. And when there's an argument, I won't stand my ground enough. Right. And sometimes I'll get it when I've like been on national TV and I feel stupid. Well, I, did, I didn't explain that good enough, you know, right, and okay. I, I'm like kicking myself. Yeah, I got you. So it's not like a, a, a regular occurrence for you. Do you have do you have dreams yourself? Because you can analyze all this stuff. Oh yeah, do you, I do. Do you, do you have dreams that, that regularly you have that you can't sort out? Um, I well, sometimes it will take me a while to finally get it, but right. I'm usually able to. Sometimes I'll interpret my dream while I'm having it, and really? sometimes <laughs> yes, you analyze it while you're asleep. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm like, oh, mad. I know what this is. I know what that that dead horse means. Um, and sometimes what does a dead I will, horse mean? okay, so, so your, a horse in a dream will typically represent your strength and your ability to get back in the saddle when you feel like you've been knocked down in some way. So if the horse is sick or dead or dying, then you may be feeling like your, your strength is in some area is, uh, you weren't strong enough in some area. Kind of goes back to the, is that, uh, do you head. ride horses though? No. Oh, so that's just for anybody, because I wouldn't imagine like yeah. So someone, some an equestrian, for example, it may mean something completely different, right? Because I understand what you're saying, get back on the saddle and, and stuff yeah. like that. But if you don't associate that with right, you know, this what is I mean? where your here, personal it's not, it's, yeah. horses are not like in America. Probably more people are into horses. I mean, I don't know, I don't know. not particularly in Florida, but Texas and stuff like that. Yes, maybe. yeah. And so but, this is where your personal associations with what you're dreaming about comes in to right. play. Okay. Anything else, Lee, your question before I go on to some more yeah. listeners? Um, <laughs> again, another dream. I, I, I've not had it for a few years, but another dream I used to have, and it used to scare the living crap out of me. So I used to, like, as a kid, sitting in my bedroom, looking at the bedroom door, and this little girl used to pop her head around the corner of the door, go, hello, then go back. Hello, then go back. It wasn't like in the that. haunted house, was it? It's in the haunted house, yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, you, and, uh, you grew up at a haunted house? Yes, yes. Hmm. And um, so 
I used to have this dream, and all of a sudden, she used to pop her head out behind the door, then run towards me, like, rah, like that. Then I used to wake up. And it used to scare the living... Uh, it was really strange, because when I was in... When, I, when I'm in the dream, and I'm sitting on the bed, and I, I know what's going to happen, and I can never get away from it. Mm. And it's just, it used to scare the living crap out of me all the time. Do you know the history of that house? Uh, a little bit, yeah. It's um, w when I was a kid, uh, my uncle was leaving to go back to his home, and he was, my mum and me was up at the window, and we were waving out the window. And then when he got home, he phoned my mum. He said, "Who's the little girl next to you and Lee?" She went, "What little girl?" She was like, "He was like, there was a little girl next to you and Lee." And it's like, but the history behind it, it was like, we was, I think we were the second tenants in that house. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more the land that has, has the history because it's, it's built on old, like a, I don't know, it's an old rectory. So is it? Yeah. Oh, on Rectory Road. Rectory Road. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So. I would look more into that. Yeah. History there. How old mm. is the house? Uh, about... Well, how old? It's about 50, 50, 60 oh. years. Yeah. It's not, it's not very old, uh -huh. but, it, but it's, something must have happened there maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And w there's been loads of things going on in that house. I remember I was asleep one, uh, I must've been about 22, 23 and I was asleep and I was so, sort of like in a subconscious, I could hear what's going on outside and, but I was like asleep and I could hear heavy breathing in my ear and me being me, I just went, Oh, piss off. <laughs> and it stopped. Right. You said this, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, trying, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what that could be is something called, <laughs> I can never <laughs> get through this without laughing. Yeah. <laughs> it's called exploding head syndrome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> Sounds about right for you, Lee. Yeah, it does, yeah. So what, what, <laughs> it's not unlike uh, the experiences, the auditory hallucinations we have during sleep paralysis. So yeah. when we go to sleep and we're dreaming, the tiny little bones in our inner ear vibrate. Yeah. And if we start to wake up, you know, before we're, our body can, you know, reactivate our muscles and everything. Um, and, and we're stuck in that in-between state. And you, you mentioned you were like subconscious when this happened. Yeah. yeah. The little vibrations deep in the inner ear can sound like things like a gunshot, a buzz, yeah. an explosion, a whisper, heavy breathing, the doorbell. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very real. And then people actually get up yeah. and go to the door. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that that might have been what was going on with the. I've actually breathing. I've actually answered the phone in my sleep once, like uh, my friend si my friend Simon uh, called me, and I've literally answered the phone in my sleep, and I remember talking to him. He's going, "You right, Lee? You right, Lee?" Like that, and I'm going, "Yeah, yeah, mate, yeah, mate. Uh, I'll ca I'll call you back. I'll call you back like that." And I put it down, and I woke up. I was like, "What the hell?" So I've rang him, <laughs> and I've said to him, like did I just speak to you? And he went, yeah. He goes, you didn't sound right at all. I was like, I was you, actually asleep. I'll do that thing. If I, if <laughs> I, if I uh, speak and I'm uh, kind of like in a semi state of sleep, I'll just talk absolute shit. Like, you know, <laughs> do you, was you doing that? Or was you, like when, when you yeah. just start saying weird things, like all oh, the walls, the wall. He was, the, he, was the, he was just basically all he said to me was you, all you were saying is, uh, yeah, you are. So yeah, yeah. I'll call you back. I'll call you back. But I was asleep, and nah. I had to. I, Were I you on to... any kind of medication? Yeah. No, no, nothing. Like heroin. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like Ambien, like Ambien. Um, no, nothing to cause no. weird sleep parasomnias, where people no. like get up and and make dinner while they're sleeping. You know, there was no. this one woman who made yeah. a, a a shake out of butter and cigarette butts <laughs> that's weird because don't don't some people claim that they murdered in their sleep yes yeah. yes would you believe that them defense. uh i would want to know their sleep history 
So if they, you know, got a history of, of sleepwalking, sleep driving, you know, what sort of parasomnia is they're dealing with? Yeah, I could. Has anybody it. ever like asked your advice about any cases when someone's used that as a defense? Um, Court TV did a long time ago. Right. Um, I can't even remember the case, but yeah, that's the only time. That, but it's, yeah, but that's, yeah. Uh, that's if, crazy, if you can back it? it up, if that's your defense and you can back it up with the yeah, medical history. To not, I'd yeah. be inclined to not agree, to not believe that, that. but then uh, only because I can't imagine it. But from what you're saying, yeah. it seems possible. Yeah. Mm. Especially crazy, if you're on like, like Ambien causes very, very strange, you know, and you can go through all these, you know, you can drive and right. be asleep. So you're saying that uh, it, you would, you would be inclined to maybe, maybe agree that could happen as long as there was medication involved, not just from. If there was a medication involved, yeah, I would definitely be more inclined. Yeah. But again, I, w I would want to know their sleep history. Mm. Like, yeah. and if they've been to a sleep clinic and they do have some kind of weird parasomnia mm. and for example um there's there's something and it, it tends to affect mostly middle-aged men um and it's called rem behavior disorder where they act out their violent dreams and they like will literally punch their wife in the back oh. of the head <laughs> yeah, you know they'll climb up on their on their um chest of drawers you know they and it also can lead to Parkinson's. Mm. They found that, that men who, who get REM behavior disorder also wind up with Parkinson's. So, yeah. yeah. Crazy. All of a sudden I feel normal with my sleep pattern. <laughs> to right. I thought I was a freak until I started hearing people was doing elbow drops from the top rope on their wife. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, I've got another, I've got one here, right? So I don't know what, I don't know what you're going to make of this. It's Lisa from Norfolk uh, in, in the UK. Here. She's, says again always again i don't know when these are just little short messages people are sending me always dreams that she gets stabbed in the throat oh <laughs> wow okay so again if, if i were talking to her, i'd want to know when this started and how frequent um so again the throat area in a dream would be connected to communication if she's getting stabbed in the throat then she's got <clears throat> quite a communication issue yeah. she she may be feeling like you know and I would want to know in the dream do, do you feel yourself like how much do you like the details in a dream are very 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 important to pay attention to because they are part of the message they are a piece of the puzzle of the big picture your dream is trying to give you so I'd want to know you know do does she feel the blade go in does she feel it choking her these sort of things would make a big difference so if that's the case then she may get this dream so frequently because she is either having a hard time speaking up about something or someone around her is not allowing her to speak up about something right so it's things anything kind of around the mouth area or vocal area is usually a, a yep. problem that you've got with vocalizing your, yeah. yes I've, I've just thought of what I'm, while i was saying that i've just thought of one i can't believe I did, i've not wrote this down this is me right <laughs> Uh, I've probably told you about this, Lee, in the past. It's years ago now, probably about 10, 15 years ago. But this this is the probably the moment of my life that freaked me out more than anything else that's ever happened to me. And it was involving a dream. So I was dreaming right before I woke up to, for go, to go to work that I was walking from my mum's house, even though I didn't live there. I was walking from my mum's house down to where I work. For some reason, in the middle of the night, I, I always drive up. I was walking in this dream. And I could hear, it was foggy, and I could hear footsteps behind me somewhere. So I was like, what's going on here? Um, and I, as I walked, suddenly a guy appeared with a, a green, a long green coat on and grabbed me and started fighting with me. And I've managed to get him off and chucked him out into, the, this is a road called Sandham Road. I've thrown him out into this road. Uh, and then I woke up, right? And I thought, that was a bit weird, like to so be dreaming. It's probably nothing out of the ordinary. Anyway, <laughs> I've then got in my car and drove to work. And as I've come down Sandham Road, this guy that I've just dreamed of mm. is crossing the road in front of me. Nothing happened, but that was the guy. And I'm thinking, all I could put it down to was, have I seen him on other mornings and not 
took it in right and put him in my dream because of where i was that's all i could to reason with myself yeah because i was too freaked out to think that i've just had a premonition or something right because i nearly ran him over because i was a bit bit late for work (laughs) so i nearly did leave him laying in the road just like the dream but i I, I, as he was crossing i'm like what the you know what i mean and I'm, i'm like slammed the brakes on he sort of cross looked at me and carried on going and i'm like oh, i've just seen him five minutes ago when yeah. i was asleep uh, odds are that that your conclusion is what you know you, you've yeah. probably seen him before not thought about it but the subconscious so. picked up on it the subconscious remembers everything everything you ever ever experience see yeah. smell taste is stored in the subconscious mind and the subconscious will bring it up every now and then it will borrow from that warehouse and incorporate it into your dream, you know, as part of the message that it's giving you. Yeah. Um, the, the, the reason why I'm thinking it's not a precognitive dream is because you didn't get in a fight with him. No, it didn't play out exactly. as The dream. only thing that was the same was what he was wearing and where exactly who yeah. he was and the exact place. That right. freak but I, I approached that place yeah, from, a diff, from a different <laughs> angle from where I did in the dream. In the dream, I came straight down the road straight. And this one, I came down that actual road. That road like crossed my path in the dream. Yeah. But in real life, I actually drove. That's, that was my way to work. Uh, and it was just random that that, that was. So, so do peop, has anyone ever spoke to you about anything like that before? And, that, and thinking they were having some kind of a premonition. Right. Yeah, I'm asked about it all the time. Right. Um, okay. Okay, so so a precognitive dream, which is a dream that shows us the future, usually there, there's criteria for it to be categorized and certified as a precognitive dream. Right. It can't be like a weird or symbolic dream, you know, like a, a pig with three heads. You know, it, it, it's <laughs> yeah. like got to be like, like a snapshot of something that could actually happen. And then when the event you dreamt about happens, it happens exactly as dreamt and it happens within days or perhaps weeks, not right. like years down the road. Not 10 minutes. Yeah, so 10 minutes is certainly <laughs> soon enough. <laughs> so it, it, I mean, it, yours is so close to being pre-co- a precognitive dream, but I'm thinking yeah. your analysis that it's probably, cause you've seen them before and you probably yeah, had getting up and going yeah. to work on your mind you know yeah and that may have been i think that's more likely yeah what so, about you... what about like jumping in and out so what about jumping into different dream dreams so you're in one scene in a dream mm-hmm. all of a sudden you jump into another scene in yes. a dream then another right. one yes okay yeah. so, so that dream... always freaks me out as well dreams will suddenly switch scenes like that when mm. it's showing you how one thing will lead how one thing can lead to another or is commenting on something in your life where something has led to another. So I I would need you to give me a dream that you've had like that. So I could explain how that works, but it's yeah. 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 Like, like the settings of your dreams are really, well, every element of your dream is important to pay attention to because nothing's random ever, even down to, the shirt you're wearing, the color of the mm. shirt you're wearing, um, every well, what detail. About, sorry, what about what about when you switch in people in and out? Do you know what I mean? Like, so I'll be out in my, in, one, in a dream. I'll be with two people, probably usually that I haven't seen forever, uh, and they usually probably wouldn't even know each other, but we'd all be together. But then something will just happen, and it will just without me even realizing it until I think about it. That person is now somebody else. Yes, yeah, that's common too. Um, yeah. So again. Everything in your dream is some part of you. So the people you dream about will represent some part of your own personality, some quality or behavior, something you share or identify with that person. Unless it's like you're dreaming of your spouse or someone that you deal with daily. Otherwise, the person in your dream will represent some part of you. So you want to look at that person and say, what stands out to me about this person? What quality... What is it about them that first comes to mind when I think of them? That will typically be what they represent. So, for example, if you dreamt of, you know, the the lead cheerleader from high school. So she may represent your ability to cheer other people up, for example. Yeah. 
So it's not the person, it's what they represent. So you're saying okay. it's always something that, so if, if there was someone in your dream, you think, I don't know who the fuck that, I ain't got a clue who that was. You probably have seen them about, they probably exist. Well, there, I, see that, I get asked that too. And, and there is a, a, a theory that, that the people that you dream about that don't actually exist are a combination of people you've seen at some point you know, that your right. subconscious is kind of put together into one person. And I don't know how we could know that unless we had a constant DVR going on in our life <laughs> that we could, yeah. you know, I don't know how we could prove that. It's, it's, it's an interesting theory, though. Do yeah. you, um, when you said uh, like a minute ago about uh, you've had that, what I said to you about my dream, and you said you've the, the people have said that before and, and uh, whether they're like, having a, like a premonition of what's good that see in the future in a dream. Mm -hmm. So what, so do you believe that? Do you, do you believe that's possible? Do you believe that, that the future, that like the future can be seen? I think that it can't be. Yeah. I think mm. it, it's very, very, very rare for it to happen. Right. But I do think that it does happen. Um, there's, some recorded cases in history of it happening, like Mark Twain, for example, had a dream that his brother was killed in a riverboat accident and he went to go identify the body. And when he walked in the room, the casket was up on two still chairs and there is a wreath of flowers on it, white flowers with a red flower in the center. Very shortly after that, his brother was killed in a riverboat accident. He went to go claim the body. He walked they brought him into the room. His casket was on two still chairs. And then I think the only difference was that a nurse walked in with flowers instead of them being on right. the casket. Mm. So that's, you know, pretty undeniable proof. Do, do we know, though, did, 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 he, did he say that on record before that happened? Right. See, that's another um, criteria that you have to yeah. have documented proof. Either you wrote it down or you told someone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it can happen. And why? Well, is time really linear? You know, the no, whole time yeah. space continuum yes. thing. This is a lot. This is a lot of what we do on the on this podcast. Everything is is strange. Like we do ghosts, UFOs, mm -hmm. you know, conspiracy theories and all this sort of stuff. So we do. But me and Lee can never come to like We don't know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We just talk <laughs> right. about it. We can never We're, come to a, everything seems feasible. Yeah. yeah. And on one hand, you think that's that's absolutely ridiculous. How could that possibly happen? And then when you actually start researching the show, it's like this is very weird. Like, wh how would this happen? So yeah, I just wanted to kind of to kind yeah. of get your opinion on that. Yeah. Quickly. Oh, there's also real quick. Yeah, um, there are when you asked about you know did he have this written down? Had he told someone? So there are documented cases of um, the Titanic sinking that passengers or would-be passengers dreamt about it sinking right. hitting yeah. an iceberg sinking yes. and they had told someone that's funny so, we did we did a titanic show about three weeks ago on that, oh. on, that on that conspiracy when that came up yeah somebody had predicted that uh but didn't they still get on it though lee was it, does, the, okay so, yeah. so there's there's um i think there were 14 um premonition dream, precognitive dreams that they were able to authenticate. One mm. of them was a mother who got on the ship, but she couldn't sleep. She knew it was going to sink. And she had told, I think she told, you can find it on YouTube. She, her daughter is talking about it. Right. And then the night it sank, she could not sleep because she like knew. Yeah. Because I'd never get, whenever I'm going away, like on a, on a holiday or something, I always dream about the plane crashing. Mm. And it's probably common, especially since <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I'm like, I, 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 I used to have this weird dream that, that I was on a plane and suddenly it would just go directly up in the air. You can't even see my hand directly up in the air and then just turn around and come and crash down like this. It's like, I just stop, it's impossible to manoeuvre to make. But yeah. like for me, that was like, oh, that, uh, if that happens, I'd, I've never, I still, when I get on a plane, I'm absolutely fine. I don't worry about it. But uh, I always do have those sort of dreams. I think if I was on the Titanic, I just would have ignored that dream as well and died. All right. Yeah. Okay, but plane crash dreams, which are pretty common, and some people freak themselves out after a plane crash dream and cancel their trip, which is ridiculous. Mm. Mm. Um, those are usually connected to dashed hopes 
you get that dream when something you had high hopes for, something you hoped would yeah. you know, take off sort of new heights instead right. came crashing down. Oh. And so, you know, oh. the dream just yeah. illustrates, you know, how you're feeling about it. Yeah. What right. about, what about the, um, the, do you know when you have a dream of you're falling mm. and then you wake up before, Bang, you hit, yeah. hit, before you hit the ground? Okay. So yeah. there's, there's the dream where you're, uh, there's a whole storyline and then you wind up falling. But then there's yeah. also when this happens on the onset of sleep. Yeah. Right. And you jerk yourself awake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's called the hypnic jerk. And that happened. And then the brain will kind of fill in real quick some sort of scenario, like you trip or something. <laughs> um, so right. what that is, you know, like I mentioned earlier, that there's a lot going on in the brain and the body that allow us to fall asleep. Mm. So what you're experiencing is your muscle control falling away. It feels like falling when your muscle control goes dormant. That's why we call it falling asleep. Yeah. And so sometimes, and it usually happens when you're not getting good sleep or you're having fitful sleep or light sleep, you'll, your muscle control will start going dormant and you get that falling feeling and you jerk yourself awake because you, your brain starts going, oh shit, we're falling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that, so that just fills in a blank. Like, so when it's that, that's, that yeah. probably hasn't happened in your dream, but that's the thing that you remember. That yeah. You yeah. So the subconscious has a really neat way of flawlessly incorporating outside interference into a dream, for example. You know, maybe you're sitting in a cafe in Paris with Angelina Jolie and the waiter comes over. Instead of telling you what the specials are, he starts barking. <laughs> it's because you know, there's some, <laughs> yeah. some dog outside. Yeah. So could that conceivably barking. be then? So so now you say that, when I said earlier on about like my alarm will wake me from, oh my God, why has it done it at that point? Could that yeah. be my subconscious filling in that that was actually something good was about to happen and my alarm just done it to <laughs> it piss could, me off more than be. usual? It could be. It could yeah. be. Uh, it, of course, it, it does also, seem bizarre that it would be the timing would be that spot on with yeah, when I wanted that, to stay asleep at the most point. The alarm yeah. is already going off, but you haven't received it yet. And right. so the subconscious is kind of building a storyline very yeah. quickly around it. Yeah. That's mad. Like the brain's is fascinating. It, it is. Yeah. It's crazy. The, 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 I didn't, you don't think of any of this stuff. You just think, right, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to have a dream and it's going to be insignificant then i'm just going to crack on with life like you don't think of all this intricate stuff that's going on to build this story in your head like i always think to myself sometimes do you ever wake up and think that'd be a fucking brilliant film yes <laughs> yeah. i'll need to write that down and i'll, and I'll sell this story it's yes. no one's ever thought yeah. of this i'll do that yeah. all the time yeah. I just think, you know people... you should you never know i mean we have a lot of really great stories in our culture thanks to people who did dream it and thought this would be a great story yeah. <laughs> like stephen yeah. king uses his dreams in his storylines for example this is gross <laughs> uh -huh. you know his story misery yep yeah okay yeah. so you know in in real in in the story she you know cat finds the writer she's his biggest fan she holds him captive and breaks his legs and all that in his dream he he had this dream when he fell asleep on an airplane about a woman who captured her uh favorite writer but she skinned him <laughs> <laughs> and wrapped his skin around <laughs> his own book <laughs> oh nice yeah like you know leather bounding how they used yeah, to do yeah 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 did that with yeah. his skin and so yeah. that inspired him to write the story of misery yeah. that that feel that film disturbed me well yeah it really did disturb <laughs> yeah. me when she got the sledgehammer to smash yes. his legs i was like really are you that obsessed <laughs> so if you want to keep him if you're generally like a bit of he's obviously a bit of a sick fuck, and he uh stephen king yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're, yeah. you're more, he's more likely to have dreams along what his natural thought process. Yeah. Right. You know, your personality, it does color the type of dreams you have. So that's why you're in a field of uh, fluffy clouds right. and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm, a, I'm a care bear, mate. I'm a care bear. <laughs> <laughs> you are a care bear. Yeah. No, but there's one, there's one uh, other dream I want to ask as well. And yeah. you've probably heard this so many times. Me? Um, no. No. Yeah. Well, I'm the dream Laurie, expert now. Yeah. You can yeah. talk to me about this if you want. Laurie, it's um, when you 
in your dream, you're walking down the street, all of a sudden you look down and you've got nothing on. Yes. It's that's like... where you that's how you walk around though, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a dream. <laughs> yeah, the naked in public dream, probably in the right, top yeah. five most mm. common dreams we all get. So, yeah. and you know, you can be back in high school or you can be at the mall, you know, and suddenly you really, oh shit, I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> so, the naked in public dream tends to happen when you're in a situation in real life where all eyes are on you and you're, you have a lot of concern about how others perceive you. Yeah. So for example, I got that dream the night before I went on Good Morning America. As I was having a lot of concern about how everyone's going to see me. Right. Yeah. When something's going on where you're feeling vulnerable, exposed in some way, you're afraid people are going to notice your flaws. Mm. Anything like that can cause yeah. a naked and public dream. But here's what's interesting about it. Have you noticed in these dreams, you're freaking out about your nudity, but no one else in the dream notices or cares? Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. the way your very wise subconscious mind is saying, get over yourself. No one else is giving <laughs> any thought at you. Yeah. Yeah. No, no one cares about me when I'm walking naked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he used to tell me, because he lived in Cyprus for a long time when we were, uh, he's back in the UK now, but when we first yeah. started doing this podcast, he'd say things to me like, we'd sit and do Zoom and do the show. And then he'd say, I've got nothing on under the table here. <laughs> I'm not just been like, <laughs> by, by the way, I'm fully dressed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, you know, you're not alone. A lot of people don't bother putting their pants on. No. And then did you in did you hear the story over there? Here a New York Times writer was caught jacking off during a Zoom no. meeting. What do you mean? Oh. What, on TV? Yeah. Well, during a Zoom meeting. He was no. and I really? don't know what he, he accidentally stood up or something and everybody saw. He, he accidentally stood up with his yeah. cock out. That's yes. mental. Yeah. So I remember, I remember that one not so long ago where they, what was it? A, was it a Zoom? Was it a court hearing or something like that? And the guy was a cat. Yes. That was brilliant. I love that. He had the filter on and he couldn't turn it off. And he was, and he was giving it, I'm not a cat. I'm not a cat. <laughs> we didn't think there was a talking cat on there, mate. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Oh, what else have I got? There's one more I've got here from a, a listener, Eric in Portsmouth, UK. Uh, he dreams a lot about the house being on fire. Oh, okay. Uh, sometimes our dreams will serve as warnings. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, this Sorry, Eric. Like, it's yeah. symbolic. It's not about his actual house catching on fire, but it's symbolic of something else, Some something that he might consider an urgent situation you know if you can find the metaphor or the figure of speech in your dream you found a good part of the message so you know when we've got you know a lot of urgent issues we need to take care of we say i have a lot of fires i need to put out right so this could be connected to some very urgent situation he needed to take care of however house fires can also be a warning from the subconscious that you are on the verge of being absolutely completely and utterly burnt out yeah something in your real life so i would ask him or tell him to ask himself go there first it, are you really yeah. burnt out from your job or from a relationship where are you just feeling like you're almost a shell of yourself yeah so it's usually like lacking in something so uh, uh, eric are you burnt out? If you're burnt out, it's all right. At least you're not ineffective like Ollie. Well, really. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ollie, sounds like, Ollie sounds like a right loser. Sorry, Ollie. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, quickly, I just wanted to ask you that you said like, what? so you said dream expert to the stars. Come on, give me some, give me some uh, dirt. What stars? Oh, Who? Okay. All right. I can, I can tell you some. I can't tell you others. Like I've worked with Rihanna. Right. Um, I've worked with Carson Kressley. I've worked with um, um, Miranda Lambert. I don't know if country's big over there. Mm, not really. No, I don't, I don't know that. Don't. Dan and Shay love better country and western. You do? Yeah. I, I, I couldn't I tell you any in, country singer. I, I grew up in Tennessee, so. Right. Yeah. You like Tim McGraw. Yeah. I love Miranda mm. Lambert. Um, mm. Oh, speaking of country, Carrie Underwood. I've worked yes. with her. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Only the, wasn't she from uh, American Idol? Yes, American. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, American Idol. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
there, there's there's a lot do you do you watch real housewives of beverly hills over there no there's so many different real housewives that i can't tell which one's which there was i've heard of it yeah okay yeah. so, so brandy's on real housewives of beverly hills oh brandy yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So. You know, <laughs> i used to watch this stuff they yeah. used to do my head in these women i, just I only know it because of emma oh right she watches yeah, it does she? she watches yeah. all that yeah so, so some of them to tell you not swear you to secrecy then please don't tell uh, well, anybody yeah i have a lot of clients you know yeah I, I ethically can't you know right okay what was what was rihanna struggling with then tell me okay so she had, <laughs> she had, this was a while ago was she it had, wasn't about uh getting wet because she never had her umbrella <laughs> <was it? laughs> no, no. she had a dream that she was in a really big city with her little brother and um this plane crashed into a building and collapsed on her brother so right. it's very eerily similar to 9-11, mm. but yeah. it, it actually wasn't about that at all. This was when, um, this was, um, she was getting this as her career was just beginning. So that's what the plane symbolizes. Her career was taking off. Right. Um, she's very, very close to her brother. So that's what the building represented, the, the relationship she built with her brother. That's why it was a skyscraper. So they were very close, long, long history of, you know, a relationship together. The collapse of the building was her concern about how the, her career was going to affect him because now that her career is taking off and she's going to be going all over the world and not going to be able to be there for him anymore. Right. So that dream was an expression of her concern for her brother. Right. Yeah. So, and she, she, that she never had that. So once she'd, ex you'd explained what that yeah, was she about, she was go. okay. Oh, that's yeah. good. See. Yeah. We were going to be cured today, Lee. You won't be having that one about the ghosts no more. Do you know what? It's, it just freaks me out. I'm, I'm intrigued to have it again. To say, you ain't real, mate. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know what he said to you earlier on? Because he, he mentioned this. We've done a, a show on hauntings and stuff. And he said mm. about the whispering in the ear. And you've said that's probably uh, a subconscious. Exploding head syndrome, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. Uh, well, Lee was convinced that was a ghost whispering in your ear, weren't you? Yeah. Because I always remember, right, my nan used to say, if you if you hear or see any ghosts and you're scared just tell them to go away but me being me at that age i just went oh piss off yeah because <laughs> i was so tired didn't you say they boarded your bedroom up when you yeah were yeah there? so when uh my mum and dad moved out of that house they these this new family moved in and the so it was a three-story house so the bathroom was upstairs with the two bedrooms and the father's come out the bathroom, looked in my old bedroom and saw something that completely freaked him out. Uh, later on, they, they literally boarded the bedroom up and said, no one's going in there. So he oh. said he saw this, this figure to stand in there in the bedroom and just freaked him out. And they boarded it up? They boarded it up, wow. yeah. I have a yeah. similar story. Go on. <laughs> okay, when I was... A teenager, I used to do the Ouija board. No, oh, we yes. talk about this all the time. Yeah. Why, why would you do that? You're insane. I was curious. I was curious. Did any? Come on, I want to know. Did, have you, you uh, have you been possessed? Uh, so I. Well, there, there's a whole other story with that. But that that's not where I was going to go. Yeah. The no, story I wanted to share was I would do the Ouija board in my room with my friends and, and with my oldest sister too. Um, and then years later, after I moved out of the house and, and my parents, you know, lived in the house for many years after I moved out and we all had kids and my, there was always a very strange odor in my bedroom and no one would ever, you know, when the whole family would come to visit for Christmas or whatever, no one would ever want to sleep in there because there was this odor my parents could not get rid of and they recarpeted it and there's just always this odor. And then when we had our own kids and we'd all you know, have family gatherings and we, you know, put all the kids upstairs where the children's rooms were, no one would want to sleep in my room. They were just scared to go in there for no reason, apparently that we could, but it just, it smelled weird and people didn't want to go in there. 